Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help tell the story of the 20th century. Next, a portion of the bi-weekly World War II newsreel series, Army-Navy Screen Magazine. Intended only for servicemen around the globe, the 20-minute reports appeared between 1943 and 1946 and were supervised by film director and Army Major Frank Capra. The experience of our armies in Africa and Europe has emphasized the importance of rail transportation in combat areas and the importance of organizing and training railroad battalions for use overseas. All these officers and most of these enlisted men are old hands from the Pensy, the B&O, the Delaware Hudson, and the other great railroads of America. Once they put on fatigues, they start at the beginning again and learn railroading the Army way until they can strip and reassemble a locomotive under field conditions. These are government-owned train sheds and repair shops at Camp Claiborne. And after these men learn the nomenclature of the iron horse, there's a 50-mile strip of standard gauge track to practice on. In total war, railroading is a weapon, and the work of shunting and coupling freight cars is work for soldiers. Soldiers engineer the locomotives and man the switches, and the soldiers at Claiborne run a regularly scheduled train each day over the 50-mile strip between Claiborne and Camp Polk. But this is no milk train. These men are schooled to work under fire in combat areas. They furnish their own security and observation, and when they hit trouble, it's their mission to repair the damage and keep the train running. After the damage is estimated, the call for repair crews goes from the signal man to the Claiborne operator to the dispatcher, and the crews pull out. Some of them traveling overland in trucks, some of them coming up along the rails on hand cars. Bulldozers level the bombed roadbed, and flat cars bring up new rails. A stretch of track carrying supplies can be the lifeline of an army or a campaign. Long reaches of track and slow-moving trains are vulnerable to sabotage, landmining, and aerial attack. Men trained on the Claiborne line have already done vital work under fire in establishing and maintaining supply lines on the battlefields of Africa and Europe, and in reconditioning lines destroyed by the enemy in retreat. The importance of this work increases as the Allies cut deeper into Europe and their armies move further inland from their coastal supply depots. Railroads bind together the territory we hold and push ammunition, food and equipment across yesterday's battlefields up to the expanding front. You can watch this and all other Real America programs at cspan.org. Just enter Real America into the search engine.